Okay, this is going to be interesting, but I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Okay, because the cable for the regular microphone broke, and we, instead of being smart people, instead of me being a smart person, we ran all over Creation in town looking for a cable that was micro USB in one end and lightning on the other. Guess what? Nobody carries it. Nope. It was but, a waste of time. Total waste of time. But we did get to see, I don't know, traffic. Yeah. <laughs> giant TVs. Oh, you didn't get to see the giant TVs. We went to Best Buy first. Mm hmm And Sebastian likes looking at the giant TVs. He does. It's true. But anyway, we were able to actually go backwards and use the old, old microphone. That people like to complain about. But it's actually working. We have it turned up all the way, and the levels look great, according to this thing. I don't know. If you can't hear us, then I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> hey, look at my hair. Anyway, it's Friday. Uh-huh. It's sunny. Yes. It's warm out. Um, what? I, I don't know. We're supposed to banter. I well, we that. did already. I mean, we just had No, a, you just talked a lot. We just had a frustrating morning. Yes. Frustrating morning. I need to research electronics. Yep. Actually, I want to spit my gum out. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, uh, the first question I'm going to read uh, from Mohammed Haji. Uh, amazing content. Love your videos, although the mask on the wall throws me off. I'd be super comfortable if it weren't there. Okay. <laughs> oh, would you come off of here? break it. Uh, yeah. Oh, would you come off? <sighs> Do you want me to do it? No, I think I can do it. I'm waiting for everything to fall. <laughs> He's going to fall on your head. Maybe. We'll find out. Ugh. So that's the god of sumo wrestling. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better. I am going to put this one back because actually she is, she is a sign of... Uh, beauty and happiness and good luck and I think love. Obviously, you know, Japanese at this time had a different idea about that. But for this video, we'll leave up the god of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> but then next time, we'll we'll put her back up again because she's a happy person. From Spencer Braithwaite, my question for next mail call: What's your all-time favorite Seiko case design? What design features do you look for in a case? I need a little video. Uh, my favorite case, honestly, it's 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 got to be the 6105, 8110, 8119. Its ergonomics are astonishing. I mean, it's just such a beautiful watch. They did uh, the, the asymmetry of the case, the way the case curves up over the tops of the, tops of the crowns, this undercut. I mean, it, when you're wearing one of these, you don't really feel like you're wearing anything because it doesn't interfere with your hand at all. And, you know, like this, the 7549, it's immediately recognizable, utterly unique. Sorry, I keep bonking this. I mean, if we compare, okay, we compare this, this watch, you know, basically archetype of the late, you know, 1970, 1978 is when it was made. So if we look at a similar period Rolex, I mean, this is a classic watch, of course, and but they sort of occupy the same niche in terms of their functionality. This is clearly, it's, it's an old watch. It's an old style watch. Slab sides, square, you know, plastic crystal, old school. I mean, it has some things that are far superior. It's got the screw down, you know, triple lock crown which is really, really awesome. Their free sprung movements, I mean, technology-wise, they're great. But in terms of, you know, style and functionality, boy, this thing absolutely stands on its own, 100%. This is, I mean, it's just such a cool, stealthy watch. This is kind of a show-offy watch, and the price points for these are just ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. I mean, granted, I built this one out of parts, so it's not actually worth what uh, a full correct one would be. 
But, you know, if any watch is going to challenge this old 5512, it's going to be Seiko's perfect, perfect 6105. Just what an amazing movement. What an, what an amazing watch. So I don't have to talk about it anymore? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, but anyway. Um, I don't know. I... <laughs> but sorry, we're still all frazzled from having to run around town. We also realized... Okay, so Spencer, that's, that's the case I love. What I look for in a case is... I don't know. I like things that are useful, that are there for a reason. I don't like weird flashy crap that's like just like there for like a fashion, like aesthetic stuff. I really like a purposeful watch that is there for and everything you point to on the watch, you can say this is what this is for. So on the 6105, that beautiful shape, the way it you know, it 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 nestles on the wrist. It's just I just love it. Um we Sabrina reminded me need to do wrist check. Oh no. Okay, let's do wrist check. Okay, well, we're not going to forget this time. It's wrist check time. Yeah, so we're going to put insert it. This is inserted at the right place. It will be. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. I was going to wear my my sub, but I haven't worn it, and it was on the 31st, and I didn't feel like twisting it all the way to whatever. Yeah, because it's not a quick set. Right. I love that Rima anyway. So I grabbed this one. That's such a great watch. It's so elegant. Mm -hmm. I like the bluing on it. Yeah, it's really nice. It's just such a restrained design. It's so cool. And I am wearing this. Uh, this baby is uh, another 6138 3009. It's the, it's the shortest made of any of these jumbo references. I got this one from Sean Paul Lorenzen on, uh, uh, on Instagram. Uh, and he had this one and I, I picked it up from him. It's entirely original. I haven't, I, I mean, I cleaned it and, and restored it and all that stuff, but it's entirely original right down to the bracelet. These were only made, the 3009s were only made for, gosh, nine months apparently in like 1972. Anyway, that's it. That's pretty cool. Anyway. I need the questions. What? Oh. Anyway, what? Uh. Uh, I love the remake. No, I don't want to, Mommy. I have leggings on. Okay. Oh, God. He's look, he's still got dry toothpaste on him. Willow rubbed toothpaste on him God. yesterday. See, I needed your help. I was doing things. <laughs> Poor Milo. From Slim Perkins. Daw, cracking makes, making, is making squishy biscuits. When you machine new holes to put new jewels in, what type of mill do you use? Hand or machine? Use a hand machine. There's no way. I mean, there's... A hand or machine. Well, you use a, a, a hand-powered machine, but it's not like I'm using a jeweler's lathe or anything else like that. I use a Zeitz jewel setting tool, Zeitz jeweling tool, and that's, that's what they're designed for. That's what I use. From Aaron Petterini. Hey SNS, thanks again for the great video. Watched it while playing Apex. It's a great way to burn time on the weekends. Sadie was happy to hear somebody was talking about Apex. Uh, on to my question for next week. I am currently waiting for one of my watches to come back from service, but as expected, it's taking longer than the initial and then initially estimated. This yep. is my first. You didn't take the whole question. I didn't? Oh, no, I remember the rest of the question. He asked, he, it's a 6139, and he's like, it's taking longer. I don't want to bug the guy, but I'm worried. He's not really telling me what I need to know, and I'm worried. Is it possible that it's taking so long because the chronograph wheel is bad? Gosh, I have no idea. Um, there are a lot of parts in the 6139, and all of them are discontinued. Uh, if he gets annoyed about you bugging him, then uh, that's... You know, he has your watch. It's your right to know what's going on. One of the things that drives me nuts about working with watch people or other folks is when they are behind the curtain and they're not they're not they're not speaking with you about what they're doing. This is especially prevalent in watch people and it's just like this black hole of anti information. Write the guy and be like, What's up? What's the hold up? Uh, I don't mean to bug you, but if you could let me know You have like twelve hundred videos of information on people's watches. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, 
I, I want to be the opposite of that. But so write the guy and be like, what's the hold up? What's happening? Do you need help? Is there anything I can do? Um, I, I just, I, I understand you're busy, but I really, I want to know what's going on. Um, and then find out because if it's a bad chronograph wheel, that's a real problem because they're expensive. Um, but better to find out now. So I'd write him. Oh, it's upstairs. Sebastian. I thought it was a knock. From James Duffy. Thanks for the shout out this week, but you forgot to answer the question part of my question. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, Spencer, were surprised to learn of the ultra thin 6800 family of movements when I mentioned it months ago, so thought you would be interested in handling one and maybe reviewing it. The 6660 movement is also rare, and I wasn't sure if you were familiar with it. Anyway, just hit me up if you're interested in seeing those movements. Hey, look, someone's got a shiny car. <gasps> it's the right kind of shiny car. It is the right kind of shiny car. You almost never see them. I wonder if it's the shiny car. Uh, you'd have to look to see if it has that Star Trek sticker on the back. <laughs> uh, where was I? What? Wouldn't that be trippy if the shiny car just happened to be driving by our house? It was a Chevy Aveo that we had years and years and years ago, and I saw it at, at the community college once with the, the Star Trek bumper sticker still on and the Vespa sticker. And the Vespa sticker still on it? Uh -huh. I never should have put the Vespa sticker on that car. Well, you can always get another one. My guess. Um... Time having a watch service by this watch. Is that where I... Yeah. Am I there? Oh, 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 I got, the problem is, is the two comments got split. Oh. That's the second half of the first guy's comment. Look, it's been a crazy morning, okay? <laughs> it's been a crazy morning. I got up this morning and I'm like, okay, my back doesn't feel that bad. Maintain your form when you're doing squats. you got to make sure you're really holding to your form. Otherwise, bad things happen. But anyway, I was going to be, I was like, hey, my back feels pretty good. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know get some stuff done and we're going to do that video early get going and it's just been one hiccup after another well, it's over from r james where are the shirts that's two so far oh, wait i never answered his question again oh, um i mean sure <laughs> I, i'd be curious to see them why not uh if you if you want to send them out that's fine um for me to do a yesterday's watch review today i mean i kind of have to like look at the movement like kind of get into the movement a little bit I don't know that it would be informational the one thing to be aware of is that I'm hideously overloaded and the chances of my getting to it anytime soon are pretty slim so maybe we should ha hold off until I'm not utterly buried okay now we can ask them this question from R. James, where are the shirts that's two so far that we've seen on video at least that I've seen update update it gives me severe anxiety having to deal with <laughs> selling these shirts because I'm afraid that I'm going to screw it up somehow and people are going to get mad at me. The other option is that we pre-buy a ton of shirts in different sizes and and just I just wish there was a simple solution because this other thing we tried with the website just doesn't I don't work. Want, I don't like the idea of not seeing the thing before we send it out. So that was also a problem. So we might need to just buy a bunch in mediums to two XLs, I guess. Yeah. Because I don't think there'll be very many smalls, except for me. And Milo. And Milo. For his small brain. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, from Daniel56, hi, Spencer, Sabrina, and Sadie, S-cubed. We've been called that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, uh, this might be a question on two new a series of watches, but here it goes. I have an SKX173 with a manufacture date of April 2000, mark front and back uh, movement Singapore, with a case number 7S260029. Many years later, when it had stopped and before I had it serviced, horror story for another day, I purchased a new old stock SKX173 with a manufacturer date of April 2007, marked front and back movement Malaysia with a case number of 7S260028. My question is, was Seiko making these watches for the U.S. market in both places at the same time, or did... They move from Singapore to Malaysia sometimes between 2000 and 2007. I don't honestly know. Um, Seiko's production stuff is really opaque. I don't know. I just actually just picked up, a v thanks to Stephen Moore of the Isle of Man, 
um, who found something for me. Uh, he wasn't going to buy it himself. He wanted me to pick it up, and I did. Uh, and it's a 6309-7049, but it's basically new old stock. Bought it from an old um, watchmaker guy. It's new old stock with the case back sticker, but it has a sticker over the case back sticker that says Japanese parts <laughs> assemb oh. assembled in Hong Kong. My leg. I just want to put in a picture of that really quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is that the City Connection people? No, that's the, I think it's the people looking around to make sure that there was shuffling done. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> the reason I bring up the 6309 with this sticker that says Japanese parts um, assembled in Hong Kong is that it's the first thing, first time I've ever seen anything that documents how Seiko did this transition from working Japan, uh, from building watches in Japan to building watches in Hong Kong. That's it. I don't know. I'm not aware of Malaysia and and all that other stuff. I mean, I I believe I don't know how long they were making. Is he trying to turn? What the heck is he doing? Not knowing how to drive. <laughs> In any case, I'm sure somebody else out there has more information on this than I do because there's so much that I don't know. So if you are aware of the transition between the year 2000 to the year 2007, Singapore versus Malaysia, please let us know. Uh, I would be, I'd be very curious to know. I do know a lot of the 7002 divers um, have, uh, have um, like the late 6309s have Hong Kong on the dial. 7002s seem to be Singapore. And then I see Malaysia for a lot of the later ones, but I don't know when that division happened. Sorry about your leg. He's too fat to have balance. From Saul Brook, mail call thoughts. A Patreon page would be an assault on all Yankee probity? Probity? Probity. Probity. I can't pronounce things. <laughs> unearned, unearned money you know but yankees were all about getting their money and however they could so maybe uh, it's just yeah like the opium trade yeah i never learned about the delanos that's crazy yeah I, i'm reading i i have a minor like fdr obsession and i keep reading books about him and i'm reading one called franklin and lucy i think and it's about his uh girlfriend while well, he was married um and the delanos made their money in the uh opium issues in china yeah, and I mean, actually, and the my my Yankee ancestors, they were just, you know, swamp farmers and shipbuilders, and nobody's very cool at all until one of them happened to be the it, one of them was was one of the he did a lot of the ship shipping back and forth, you know, the the triangle shipping things in the eighteen hundreds, uh, and his ship he was the fourth officer. His ship ran into yellow fever somewhere in the Antipodes or somewhere. I don't know. Basically, all of the officers except him died. The top officer, the captain, was the author Nathaniel Hawthorne's father. And he died, as well as all the other guys. My ancestor was the only officer left alive. And he managed to get the ship back to Salem. And as a result, he got everybody's, all the officers' shares. He got it. It's not like he really even earned them, but he got it. And so, you know, I don't think he was concerned about unearned income. Though, what, did he fart? <laughs> Though that is the reason why Nathaniel Hawthorne went from being fairly prosperous when he was a young child to having a life of poverty because his father died of yellow fever and all of his father's money went to my family. And next door to Nathaniel Hawthorne's house in Salem is his family's house, the Fiffin House. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the old, um, the old burial ground in Salem, there's Fiffins everywhere. I don't want him walking all over my stuff that's behind okay, you. Okay, Milo, stop it. He did not just throw the cat. The cat just... J jump down. Jump, jump. Uh, okay, anyway. Larry's 6309H link has a 12 millimeter center link, so his end links would of little use made it to 10 millimeter H-link bracelet plus the opening 
is sized for that fat spring bar center link and would be cavernous on an East Tech or US 19 millimeter H link. Yeah, it's just the way that it goes. I mean, here here it is on my 6105, and you can see there's the East Tech H link and there's that 10 millimeter center. So I guess Larry doesn't have them. Uh, and obviously Jonathan's not making any more end links, so I only have the sets that I've got here, and those are 9 millimeters. They're not 10. Tashiar's very existence has annoyed both me and my wife for more than 30 years. You're alone. You're on a ship by yourself. From Torgier Granum, my SARB 017 Alpinus is running for... Seconds, wait, there were too many. Running four seconds an hour late after one and a half years. Uh, his replacement of the 6R15, the only option, is it possible swap to 6R35 used in the new Alpinist? Um, I mean, if, if you really want to, um, I mean, the 6R15 and the, and the, and the 35s, the, the NH35s, they are, they're, Roughly comparable. The the, the difference is the composition. Uh, difference main difference that I'm aware of is the composition of the mainspring, which in the six or fifteen is made of their sprawn stuff. So um, I don't. Yeah, you could. I mean, that's a low cost option. If that works for you, then sure. Tom N. When evaluating a 618X watch, that's like 6138, 60, that kind of thing, what are the tells for a failing chrono wheel? It's real simple. Um, if you're running it and you watch that main sweep coming around, coming around, and it hits 58, if it stops, okay. If it stops and the whole movement stops, that's good. That means the clutch is holding and it's an adjustment problem or something else. But if it comes up there, and it, maybe it hangs up a little bit and then goes forward, clutch is slipping. If it goes up there and stops and the chronograph wheel is, the chrono, the movement is still running, then you're, you're, it's absolutely bad uh, because it's not even, it, it can't stop the movement, the clutch isn't holding, and the part is bad. I didn't read the whole thing on a separate note. What? Oh, I just watched an old MC where... You talked about the 44A King Seiko movement, where you said that it's quite accurate despite its low BPH. I noticed the balance wheel seems huge. Seems it seems huge. Is that a size? Is that size a factor in the watch's accuracy? Thanks. Seiko seemed to have taken like the 6000 series. Hi, Crickles. Seiko seemed to have taken the 6000 series balance that. Big, big, big balance, almost directly in terms of size and how it works from the Omega chronographs. And if you have if you have a big wheel going back and forth, you're going to have a lot more sort of um, rotational stability. Uh, little wheels and little wheels, you know, they can they can go faster. So like when you have a high beat watch, high beat Seiko, that um, that balance wheel is actually a lot smaller because you're flinging it around so quickly. But yeah, I mean they're going to have a nice big, like the, like the 6200s, like 6217, 6218, 6206. They've got a big balance, and they're slow. They're 18,000 BPH, but they're, they can give great accuracy, and they just chuck along. Chug, 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 chug. From Tochiro. Tashi R, come on, man. I gotta agree with Sabrina on this one. You're on a ship by yourself. I, I mean, I have, I have, I don't know, I have, I have, who can say who likes what for what reason? I mean, the, the first season is awful, and she doesn't make it any better. Nope, I know. She only got the job because she was uh, Bing Crosby's granddaughter. I know. Uh, from Matt, any updates on the MGB? No. No, not really. I, I look at it every day, and uh, and I pat it, and I'll say, but it's been, th this winter has just been going. It started in mid-October, and it's still going. So until it gets warm enough for me to clean things out. Also, secondarily, um, Sabrina is convinced that I need to go whole hog on it and strip the thing down to the last bolt, and that just seems like, uh, 
a massive step farther than what I wanted to do. I just wanted to kind of get it running. Yeah, but all your friends said to do that. Are they paying for it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 my my plan was actually was to I already got the car running I know the engine runs was to clean the engine compartment out get everything running as best as I could replace the floor under the trunk because once I do that then I can bolt the new um, the new fuel tank in place I can put in all the new fuel lines that I already have to the two carburetors that I've rebuilt I've already rebuilt them completely get it to the point that it's running put it on its new wheels after doing the brakes and the front suspension and stuff, tootle around and, and, and make it nice. And then, you know, clean the engine compartment, then have the outside take take it to a body shop, have the outside cleaned up, taking it back to the original red, which is what you wanted to do, have the few pieces of body damage fixed, work on the interior. What and about the holes? What do you mean? They fix, body shops fix holes. That's what they do. I thought that's why you were taking the whole thing apart was to fix all the holes. Well, the, I don't understand what it is that I don't understand anything. I don't know. I mean, yes, the right thing to do would be to rip the whole thing down to the last single bolt, but that I, I don't know that I want to go that hardcore yet. Well, you would have to do that first. I don't know. Let's not talk about the MGB. <laughs> uh, from Walter Alvarado, 6309 movement on a 6105 is certainly an upgrade. But it also makes it a Franken watch. I'll bet one hell of a Frank Klein. <laughs> I, I made a little video about that. Yes, it is a. Um, uh, it's a Franken watch. It's a Franken Klein. Uh, I, I tend to. Both of these watches that I have here are ones that I built literally out of parts. As parts would come in from watch lots or wherever the heck it is. And, pieces here and pieces there eventually I got to the point that I could build a complete watch like I didn't I didn't cannibalize anything to make these They're like parts came in from one place or another place or I found them here and I built a watch and because none of the what neither of these watches was a thing they were all they weren't a stock piece I could build them how I wanted and what I wanted to do was make them as reliable as possible so in both cases I did the same thing I used a 6319 movement. It's like a 6309, but it has uh, diafix settings. And then what I did is I used a 6306 hacking lever and then a 6106 center wheel bridge, which has the cutout for the hacking lever. And I then I upgraded the jewels for the mainspring arbor top and bottom. And uh, I just, I made sure that these things were fully jeweled and that's what I did. So they're you know, they're, they, they're, they're wearable, and I don't have to worry about them. Like the balances, especially. They use 6309 balances, and you can still get those. And so you, it just, they just run and run, and I don't have to worry about them. I mean, I, I could turn this back into a 7549, but I prefer having an automatic in there. And that's the way they use Franken's go. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's the whole thinking behind what I do, is that they look dead stock on the outside, but inside they're, they're a sleeper, they're hot-rotted, so that they're more reliable and I don't have to worry about them. I'm also not tempted to sell them, because they're not stock. From David Wu, hi SNS, if you have a 6306 laying around, please let me know, thanks. Uh, I do. You weren't ready. I was too worried about the poor little Japanese mask. Uh, I, I do. I do. One's right here. Um, I did I did a great job on this movement, but um, I have another one coming in and it might supplant this one because I only keep one of everything. So write me and we'll see. Oh, I don't want to read that. What? <laughs> what? Charles, Charles Gillingham, so she's, she's much cuter than you. What, you, that you think it's embarrassing that you're cuter than I am? That people are saying things I was like an that. adorable young boy. When I was in high school, in college, I was catnip to the ladies. You haven't said that in years. But it's still true. Yes, you are. I was a beautiful young man. You're catnip to this lady. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> Uh, from Deegs, uh, that was almost.
purchased my first ever luxury watch about five years ago. I ended up passing on it for an Omega 2254.50, uh, but have a soft spot for it and would love to have one someday. After Hodinkee reissued a version, these just went through the roof. Uh, I have to do more research on that, but I've done some research on the Hodinkee one, but it's it's a pretty cool little watch. Um, doing some work on it. Bracelet's really short. I gotta get more links on it. I, I've lo it needs a new bezel. Bezel's worn in some places. I found a new one for not a whole lot, um, but I have to get the special Omega tool to pull the bezel. Um, yeah, I like them. That Hodinkee one, we looked at it, and it's it's interesting. Mm-hmm. What? Nothing. I don't have an opinion on it. What? I showed it to you. No, I know, but... No, it's just interesting to me that... I don't the, want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> it's interesting to me that the, Hod the Hodinkee version is, isn't is a triple date. It doesn't use a 775 one. They used a regular Omega 1861 and, they, and a vintage style uh, Speedmaster case. And then they just changed the dial and the hand colors to be, um, to, 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 um, to sort of mimic the Mark 40, but it's actually functionally, it's very different. It's nice looking though. From Oscar Gustavo Arcos Ruiz. This Omega is super duper. And in the last few months, this model has increased a lot in its popularity and price for the comments of a horology influencer, how I hate that. Well, you know, that's one of those things. What do they call it? They call it the tax. They used to call it the TGV tax. I don't know if there still is a TGV tax. But, oh, the, 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 the urban gentry guy. Oh. He used to, he, he, put, he would push this or that model and this or that model would go way up in value. I don't think we're that special to do that. Yeah. We don't I'll, influence people. No, we don't. <laughs> I can't even, can't even influence her. Okay. <laughs> uh, for Marcella Diedrich, all that in 39 millimeters? That's nuts. She's gorgeous, man. I didn't know you or Sabrina had a Seamaster. That's what's up. He's talking about your new watch. Your coaxial seam. I knew I should have worn it, but I like to try to wear something different every week. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a lot of functionality in that thing and uh, in the Mark 40. And I like it. I think it's really neat. I, I love the fact that it's got the data on the edge. I think that's just neat. From Julie Hill, like it a lot. Is this a Hodinkee limited edition version? Very similar to the Hodinkee release. This inspired the Hodinkee guy. He got one of the Mark 40s from his grandfather, and that's what turned him onto watches. And then he somehow went from being just some guy in New York to somehow magically having a profitable website. Then he was able to hire a bunch of people, and now he has major, huge watch companies doing collaborations with him. I still I don't understand how that happens. Mm. But anyway, yeah, no, it's, it's nice looking. Lots of work and luck. Uh, he did something right that we're not. What are you going to do? Oh, well. Not, and as you said, I was like, well, why did Seiko doesn't want to do a, a, co a, 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 a collaboration with me? And you're like, all you do is... Yeah. Hey, don't swear. Then we won't get any of our $1,600 from YouTube. Oh, no. Oh, no. Anyway. At least you whispered it. I'm, I, I don't yell about Seiko that much. And I, I, I yell because I care. If I didn't care, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I, I wouldn't care at all. I, I, I would treat Seiko like I treat, I don't know, some other watch brand I don't care about. See, that's, that's how much I don't care about it. I don't even know what brand we're talking about. Uh, but anyway, if Seiko were to contact me and say, you know what, we're going to do a collaboration, let's, let's do this thing, I'd work with them, sure. They better listen to me. They better listen. Boy, if they're going to come knocking on my door. They're not, because they don't want to work with you. They don't know I exist. If they did know, they wouldn't want to. But if they ever do, if it ever happens. You complain about everything. It's because they don't do it right. They and don't he, he loves complaining. Well, you know. <laughs> okay, from Spencer Brightweight. Speak up a little, I think. I believe the Hodinkee Limited Edition is based on this model. From what I understand, Hodinkee's founder got an example of the original model at some point and liked it so much that he arranged a limited re-release of it. The watch in the video is the original version from the 90s. Yep. I need to go check on Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's the story. So, 
I have the original. I have the first gen. Mine's from '95. So that's you know, it's it's cool. It's a it's a cool piece. I don't know what they're doing in terms of value. Like if you go on Chrono Twenty Four for the original Mark Forties, there's a ton of them. I don't know what a standard good price is for them. I know that one valuation I saw recently is based on older auctions that they were worth like I don't know three grand, something like that. Who knows? Lucky Gold Panda. Awesome. Talking about the Omega again. Can't wait for the yesterday's watch review on this one. Um, or as I call it, the overdue review. I've got the standard one, which is the black dial, and love it except for the bracelet. I'm curious to hear what you think of it. I'm not a big fan of how it meets the case and the clasp doesn't feel secure. You know, it's true, actually. I was looking. Uh, it's a part, so I can't show it to you. But the bracelet, the end link doesn't actually match the profile of the lugs and it sits too low in the case it's really kind of weird actually um it's not a harmonious solution which is unusual for omega and yeah it's got that weird slidey claspy closey thing and i don't really care for that either so i'm gonna have to figure out a strap option okay i just did lucky gold panda so now you're on to the next page assuming you have one Did Milo get scrubbed, or is he still sticky? He's still sticky. Why? Well, how? We're making a video. How could I scrub him? I don't know. I just don't want it to. Is he gonna uke or something? What's he doing? Oh, he's trying to settle down. Yeah, he's trying to get comfortable. Okay. Anyway, go on. <laughs> From Chill Will One Twenty Spencer, you finally managed to get your hands on a Seamaster Three Hundred Master Coaxial. Congrats! I'm so jealous. I didn't. What is that? There are too many Omegas happening. Because well, you like Omegas. I know, but which one are they talking about? Um, Mine? yours. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> there, he's jealous too. Mm. You wouldn't have worn it. It doesn't have the date on it. It would have driven you crazy. I'm not really a big fan of no date watches, but you never know. Would you go ahead and... You... No, because you're making me feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. I'm, I'm glad that you are enjoying it. I've been wearing it. it constantly, except for right <clears throat> now. Todd S., you and I love Omegas and Seikos. The watch looks fantastic. Omega does cram a lot into a small space. My Hamilton Pin Europe has almost the same 775X movement, too. It's rock solid and runs almost COSC accuracy. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, those the 775 ones are a ubiquitous movement for a reason. ETA did a great job with them. Um, and they're just, you know, they're, they're beautifully made and manufactured and they do really well. Like the Omega Mark 40 is actually the 25 joule version of that movement. Typically they're like 17 joule, but oh yeah, they run very well. What? <laughs> the next one's so funny. From King Trailblazer. <laughs> Whoever has put a thumb down, I mean, what? What are you effing low maintenance value spray in the greasy spoon brain? You are LOL only joking. You just. <laughs> <laughs> You're just having a joke, right? There's 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 like two or three people that they seem to they, they seem to base their existence and daily schedule on finding new videos of ours and putting their one or two little down votes on it. Mm. I don't know why. I don't know why. I they they happened a lot more after uh some comments I made a long time ago about um junk watches coming to the United States from the Philippines, so but I don't know. Somebody is Somebody really feels that their little downvote is just, they're just, they're downvoting us. No, I don't like you. No, <laughs> no, no more videos. I can't take it. That I suck. I don't know. Did that seriously just happen? <laughs> just imagine some little troll behind the screen. I'm going to downvote you. <laughs> Click. That will show you. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on. I can't do anything about him, so I ignore it. Hang on, I'm catching my breath. Carlos Chavez. Hello, Spencer. Sabrina, this is a question for Friday. Good news, it is Friday. I recently caught an eye for a Seiko Tuna 75497010. What price range does an original good serviced example go for with its original strap? Well, that's the first question. Um, I haven't looked at them recently. Uh, they seem to have hovered in like the 
$800 range for a really long time, which seems cheap to me. Servicing is going to add some to that, but I don't know. I've been eyeing one for a while. Are they collectible pieces? Oh, yes. Uh, is it worth picking up? Absolutely. If you find the right one, if you know what you're looking for and you get one that's entirely original, you bet. Uh, anything you can tell me about the 7549 movements and how does the case actually wear? I have a smaller wrist, 6.75 inches, and just worry about that. Uh, P.S. I think the game is pretty good. I think he's talking about Apex. Um, since my younger brother plays it and I always hear him yell at the TV every now and then, never got too much into video games and that's saying I'm in my early 20s. Always have an eye for vintage watches though, thanks anyway for the information. I made a little video about the tuna, though I got my comments wrong and so I'm going to address you as Spencer, but you're not Spencer. Hi Spencer, Braithwaite. Okay, so this is a 7549 tuna. What do I think about them? They're they're awesome. They're they're great watches. Now this one though, I modified. This is a an auto movement, so ignore that. And pretend it's a quartz. Everything else about the watch is dead stock. Sabrina's here and she's got a wrist that's smaller than mine. My wrist is ridiculously small though. Just so I mean it looks pretty big, but it actually it's not it's not ridiculously huge and it doesn't sit that high. I don't know. They're just magnificent watches. Do you still need me? No. Okay. They're just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watches. There's a long time ago, there was a poster on uh, named Harry Denmark, and he, sorry, and he, oh, he said something that really stuck with me. He said, you know, if I lost every watch and I only had one left, and that one was a 7549, then it, I, I would still feel like a, 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 a serious watch person. The stock movements in these are great. They're great. Um, extremely reliable, jeweled quartz with a variable trimmer, real high quality stuff. Uh, the only failure with them, not failure, the only upgrade they need is a jewel for the center wheel, uh, cause that tends to wear in the main plate, but they're just, they're magnificent watches. They're magnificent watches, a beautiful design. And Seiko still makes a version of this watch to this day. They invented something that no one else had done, and it's being made to this day. I mean, that's the mark of quality. What a watch. Anyway, on to the next one. You keep making me laugh. Okay. That's why we're still married. <laughs> All my auction stuff is behind us. <laughs> yep, it's true. We get a lot of great stuff on auction, so... If you go to her her parts account on eBay, there's a lot of crazy little stuff up, you know? World War II, Seiko Shah, military used watch private purchase. There's on there. 61, where is it? Are you sitting on it? You're yeah. sitting on it. <laughs> 6159, 7001 bezel. Real, original, and I won't sit on it. warmed up by Sabrina's butt. Okay, do you want me to read the next one? No, I can read one sentence. From Funky Towel, I would flat out swap everything in my collection for one of these. Uh, he's talking about the root beer, the Rolex root beer. What do you have in your collection? <laughs> it's a question. He, now he has to answer. Yes, he he will take trade apparently. Um, from P H M W U, first automatic chronograph in space, both Skylab Four astronaut. William Pogue, the Seiko 6139, and astronaut Gerald Carr Movado Datron wore a personal automatic chronograph during the 84 day uh, space station mission. So both the Seiko Pogue and the Movado Carr bear the title of first automatic chronograph in space. That's extremely interesting. And I actually, I did not know that. And I started looking at those Movados and they're not terribly expensive. Um, they used a Zenith El Primero movement. Um, they're a good size. They're like 40 millimeters. Um, triple register chronograph. Uh, they look pretty cool. Um, there's, and I think Movado even reissued them. Um, I never hear about them. I want to find some more documentation on that, but that's real, that's real special. And considering what happened to the Pogue values, I'm amazed that nobody knows about the Movado. At least I don't. Movado Datron. I'm not sure which one it is. 
Movado Datron Chronograph? Okay. Last question. Jens Refer. I've had the 7548-7000 since the early 80s. I think 1982 to 83, but not sure. I was early I was early teenager and now am 50. Ha, you're still younger than me. I have worn it every single day and used it for diving, swimming, and windsurfing every year. I've never had any problems with it whatsoever. Totally reliable, precise quartz movement. All parts are original except for the rubber straps and batteries. I just had it serviced and it passed the pressure testing machine once again. What a great watch. That's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if his was a gold one because uh, they or it was a black and white one. Oh, there's one. Ugh. Look at that. And it's a panda. With a, with a Zenith Primero movement in it. Um, I'm going to have to do some real search on it. But anyway, yeah, the 7548 dive watches, they are beautifully purpose-built. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watches. And there's nothing extra, nothing, no frills. Everything that's on there is there for a reason. Um, there's It's not a fashion watch. It's literally a dive watch. And it is supremely fit for its purpose, which is one of my, one of my, benchmarks for a good watch. I don't know, that's about it. I might make muffins. People that follow my personal account, I'm very picky about who I, I allow to follow me. Um, see that I make muffins all the time. I'm in muffin mode. Yeah, muffins are good. Yes. I we thought the dog ate all the muffins the other day, but it turns out he didn't. Yeah, Sadie put them away like a, a smart person. So anyway, we've got, she's got a lot of, because I've got so much crap here, and so she's selling off, she, this one, selling off a bunch of stuff like this, uh, you want a non-working Synchronar sun watch? It's, it's on there. I'm selling, um, I'm selling, where's the Ghostbuster watch? Right behind you. Ah, selling my Ghostbuster watch, and it has my voice on it. <laughs> see if you can hear this. Oh, it must have gotten re-recorded. I'm not saying anything. Oh. This is a Ghostbusters watch. See, it works. That's the way it goes. Anyway, so this one's available. If you want a, the real deal, full-size bracelet, too. It's absolutely wearable. It's an Italian tuna if you uh, want a project. You want a project. There's an Italian tuna in pieces. The case is all jacked up. Uh, the buttons specifically, it, it needs the right buttons. I mean, but last time I checked, a long time ago, the movement does work, but I, I we're selling it as non-working for parts. We have all kinds of crap. Yeah. Oh, and it has a, look at this. I even have a new old stock crown for it in this packet. I don't know, just stuff. Yeah. Need a Rolex 1500 case with the, with the doorstop dial and the hands are in it. All kinds of stuff. And we're going to continue to move stuff out. I, I just have too much stuff. You need room for your stuff that you need. I do. Like my MG things. That's it. It's Friday. It's pizza night. And so we're we're moving on in the world. And um, that's it. Oh, here's another cool thing. We've got 6105 8000 case. Don't see those very often. Good ceiling services, what too. What? Oh, you have that there. What? Oh, yeah. And this mod. Old school 6309-7040 mod. Old school. This is the way the guys used to do them. Everything, it's a good case with good ceiling surfaces. Everything has been bead blasted carefully, except for th the Tsunami, which is nice and shiny. It's an aftermarket dial in hands, but whoever made this had them relumed by Jack at IWW, so it glows like a maniac. Um, the movement is fine. It ba it must be serviced, but hey, man, if you want a uh, if you want a very interesting mod. Go for it. And it's got a, a textured, like, 3D-style um, insert in it, too. Anyway, somebody will have fun with this, I hope. That's it. Okay, we're done. That was a really haphazard video. Yep. And hopefully you guys can hear everything. Yes, hopefully. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.